I don't know where the biggins are. Oh, there's one. Yep. Oh, oh he's got that sucker. He's got it choked. I thought it was on the outside. <laughs> Woo! I tell you what, I don't know what it is about the springtime, but it just seems like bass love ugly color lures whether you're fishing a chatterbait like i am today or spinnerbait or even a jig it just seems like bass love these ugly lures in the spring so today we're going to fish this chatterbait a lot and i'm going to show you guys just how much even in clear water that bass love these ugly colors stay tuned it's going to be a good one Yep. Look at that. She freaking choked it, dude. Dude, just an ugly, ugly freaking lure. Oh, that is a fish, dude. They're not even hitting it, is a crazy thing. But they're all getting it. Good night. I felt him. Yep. Sure felt him. There we go. I actually saw him eat it. He crushed it. Man, just freaking crushed it. Y'all see that beaver? It's so pretty. I actually caught a beaver once. I literally caught a beaver right in the butthole. Took him? Oh, I think I got him in the butthole. And that's the beaver. That's the beaver. Beaver in the butt. Oh, yeah. Right in the butt. All right, I'll get the pliers. And I tell you what, nothing smells as bad as a freaking beaver. It's like a piece of carpet that swims. And it's, it's soaked in the water all the time. It is not smelling good. That's a little bit better one there, I think. Yeah. Man, I killed that thing and he freaking corked it. These really aren't ideal conditions for chatterbait right now. Usually I like a little bit of chop on the water, but it is the springtime and it is morning. So typically there's a little window regardless in the morning where you can catch them on a bait like this or a spinner bait. Usually I do like a little bit of chop. These fish, I think they just like that vibration in the spring and they seem to just like these ugly colors. I mean, the bright reds, the pinks, the oranges, the chartreuses. This is like a little combination of them all. They just like it. I don't know why, they just do. Is that a better one or is he just hooked funny? A little bit better one. Sometimes I feel like them fish in the spring or the big ones sometimes are just a little bit off the bank. They might not always be right up on the bank. They might just be a little bit off been catching a bunch of smaller fish pretty shallow within that first you know five foot of the bank but i don't know where the biggins are oh there's one yep that's a good one that's exactly i literally just said this that fish was a little bit deeper i let that thing come down a little bit more oh oh he's got that sucker he's got it choked I thought it was on the outside and it is, but that hook. <laughs> there we go, baby. I just love it. I just love it. That sucker, that bass was just a little bit off the bank. I had felt a log. I mean, just like I was just talking about, I think sometimes, especially in the early spring, it's like those fish are just off the bank. I mean, maybe six, or, they're maybe pulled off 10 foot literally off the bank and you catch a lot of those small ones shallow but these little bit better ones i mean that's probably a three three and a half pounder oh look at that 
got him that looks like a looks like a what kind of tail is that that guy's got a crappie tail right in in his gullet nice fish female probably three three and a half pounds thank you fish Sometimes you just see that in the spring, those fish are just, those big ones are just off the bank and they're just waiting. A lot of times later in the day, they'll move up when that sun really warms up the water. I mean, the water temp's 54 this morning and I think they're just pulled just a little bit off. So I'm gonna start making, start making sure I work this bait off just a little bit more. There's another fish. That's a little bit better one. Kind of giant. All right. See though, again, that fish was just a little bit off, and he's, you know, probably the second biggest one that I've caught, maybe a pound three quarter. Good fish. Today, what I am using is the good old fire crawl jackhammer. These suckers are pretty hard to get a hold of right now, but. Got that in three eighths and I'm pairing it with a Zoom Fout Albert. And this is the Chartreuse Peppa. This is actually one of my favorite spinner bait trailers, but I'm telling you what, you put this sucker on the old jackhammer. It is a very ugly lure, but I'm telling you what, in the spring, it just seems like sometimes these ugly lures cannot produce even natural colored lures. And I don't know what it is. It's like the fish just get reset in the spring and they just they just eat these ugly colors like i don't know what it is i don't even have to know what it is as long as i know that it works so oh golly how do you hit that hit it again right there it's like once that bait golly can you believe that that sucker missed that bait three times. Well, no, two times, and he got it on the third one. I just dropped it in his face. Old stupid bass. You know, I've done a lot of chatterbait videos in the past, but something I don't think I've talked about is really the hook set with the chatterbait. When you're fishing a chatterbait, your line is already taut, right? When that fish hits it, it's not slack like it is maybe when you're fishing a jig or a soft plastic. So when that fish hits it, all you really need to do is lean in kind of a swift lean pull to the side. And that fish is that fish is done. That sucker is hooked. You don't need to absolutely jack them. And I think that's really important because I think sometimes if you do try to jack those fish, you'll actually pull that bait away from them a little bit. So I think that what you really want to do is if you get bit, you just kind of, you know, swift pull to the side. And it doesn't have to be a big pole. You do not have to absolutely give these fish the bananas. And that's something I struggle with a lot in my early fishing career. Something I still, I, I love to set the hook. I love to set the hook hard. But you know, the more and more, you know, there's certain, there's certain lures where you can do it and get away with it. But man, it seems like a lot of times you actually just end up ripping holes that are too big in the fish which makes them get off or you know you you break your line or something some sort of failure so anymore i really do a fast pull into these fish and that really gets it done that really gets that hook through you don't you don't need a lot of weight to penetrate a, a bass's mouth so just a quick tip on chatterbait fishing and setting the hook That's a little bit better one. Woo! Man, that is so huge when fishing a chatterbait, and I think a lot of people miss it, is that a fish will hit a chatterbait on the fall a lot. That fish, I was bringing that bait out of the water really quick to make another cast, and I seen him tracking it, dropped it, and he freaking crushed it. Not a giant. I've actually found a lot of times, especially when you're fishing grass, letting that chatterbait fall is when you're gonna get 90% of the bites. Like in Florida, you're fishing hydrilla down there a lot of times and you pop that bait out, you let it fall and that's when you're gonna get a bite. If you just keep it reeling, you actually aren't gonna get bit. So letting a chatterbait fall from time to time is really gonna help you to get a lot more bites. 
Well, I'm back home now, guys, and I just want to let you know that this video is and was brought to you by the Bass Hat. So if you guys haven't picked up a Bass Hat, I'm shipping out a bunch of them today. Click the link below, grab yourself a Bass Hat, and it would greatly help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, please comment, and please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.